So welcome to the another workflow uh, video on to the gate design in Autodesk mold flow. Today I'm going to discuss on some of the best practices for the gate design and how you can improve the accuracy of results. Before I get started on to the best practices, I want to give an overview on types of gate that are commonly used in the industry. Manual trim gates and automatic trim gates. Manual, it's very common, particularly types are like edge gate, tap gate, screw gate, diaphragm gate, ring gate, fan gate, flash gates. And these are particularly in the thickness in the range of 100% all the way to the 120% of the product wall thickness. Automatic gate are being designed with a specific purpose in, in the mind and they are a little difficult to machine as well. When I say specific purpose, they need a minimal impression onto the part geometry. This is particularly used for the aesthetics of the components where they need not to have an, any uh, you know gate marks onto the parts like submarine gate, casual gate, pin gates, hot drops or could be a wall gate as well. And typically the size of these gates starts anything between 25% to the 75% of the wall gates. So one type of gates that I want to discuss is the is a submarine gate. Taper around the gate that intersects the part below the parting line goes below the parting line. Normal orifice diameter is in the range of 25 to 75 percent of the nominal wall, and as the best practices should have at least three elements defining the gate. Casual gate, this goes all the way, you know, below the parting line or and then turns up and lands into the part wall and sometimes you need to give the projections or extra part beam to land it over there. This is also called as a hidden gate. As these you can see, these are difficult to machine and also possible that can lead up into the maintenance problem. Many times these type of gates get stuck into the tunnel and at times you have to get the mold download and down from the machine and use the different techniques to remove that uh, gate portions. So let's see the what are the best practices uh, that you can use while modeling into the uh, fit systems or I try to model into the mold flow. Bytes needed to capture the gate freeze time precisely, shear rate and pressure. When I say what are the best practices, you should have at least minimum three elements across the gate to, to accurately predict those uh, three, uh, three results. Now let's look at the closer on it. Many times, you know, in hurry, we just land up with one element. That's not an at all a good practice at all. I never recommend it. Some of the things uh, by software, by default, if you assign the attributes to the curve and by default, it creates the three elements. But many times, you know, you, to increase the accuracy, you can change that default three elements to six elements. That's better, but not the best. The best would be that the long curve or the curve of the gate has to be divided further into the portion that lands to the part and for that portion again I assign a constant uh, you know constant dimension and then make a three elements around it. How to go about that we'll see into the demonstration. Now you can see that uh, normally uh, usually led up with creating the fit system like then sprue then runner and then gate. And then it lands onto the product wall. And in this case, but obvious, I have created the four elements. If you go into the generate mesh and, and look at the curve, by default it has a three. I just made it like four, but by default it is three. So if you see a, within that cross sections, you can see that. Let me move that. It's a single curve and, and I just created the four beam around it. I would say this is best practice. Uh, it's good practice. I would not say best practice. How to go about on the best practice? 
So probably what I would do is I would create an, a small section just before the landing onto the gate and uh, divide that and put a constant uh, thickness for it. Like in this case I created and I divided the curve also over here. This long curve is, uh, is divided further into the like a small curve that's like now the portion depends upon like 10 percent or it could be a 20 percent and make sure that you don't create a very long curve with a uh, with this with this constant uh, uh, diameter or section that can further increase the shear rate so you have to be a little cautious and i would say that 10 or 20 percent is good enough as in practice so make use this and you will see a difference into the shear rate pressure drop and to the gate freeze time as well. So gate size, keep the gate size below the motor limit every grade. If you see in the in the mode for database, resin manufacturer has defined the shear rate limit. Stay within that uh, limit for the better product quality. If the gate uh, geometry allows, try to keep the shear rate, uh, you know, about 20,000 uh, uh, per second. Or, or sorry, uh, reduce the share rate uh, uh, above. Uh, let me say it. Try to keep it below that uh, twenty thousand uh, mark. Easy for the large uh, gates, uh, edge gate, fan gate, and flash gate. Difficult for the sub gates and hot drops, and particularly impossible for the pin gates. And this is an on the right hand side. I try to show the picture of before sizing and after sizing of uh, gate. I hope uh, today's session on to the gate design was helpful and you will try to put those practice into your daily modeling of the gates or fit systems. Thank you for your time.